Here's the actual car valve radio vibrator. And what I did was got some information from some chaps who experience with these uh, old valve radios. And the uh, general synopsis is all you need to do is run an AC voltage through the two pins that feed the coil, what they call the shunt drive, which is the coil which produces the magnetic field. So there's two pins, and it's those two larger pins which are, I've, I'm shown connected there. Now, uh, what I did was I put a, a 240 volt AC voltage across those with a lamp in line, a 100 watt lamp in line, to limit the current to about half an amp. Uh, with half an amp going through these vibrators, that's quite safe because they can handle more than half an amp. So using the 100 watt bulb, you know, if you calculate uh, the power, power equals V times uh, I, you can work out that that's that's roughly about half an amp so that's perfect with a 100 watt bulb to test these out i did that and the the idea is if you put these through the, that ac voltage what it actually does is it cleans all the carbon and all the all the the accumulation built up on the uh, the contacts and uh, it just cleans them off so i ran that for about um 30 seconds or so which is what they suggest and uh, before I did that, I didn't get anything out of this at all. But when I, after I did that, I'm now getting something. So I'm just going to show you what what this thing does now. Um, after uh, after putting that through that procedure, now when I connect it up, I've actually I've also connected up the oscilloscope so that we can see the output from this. So let's see what happens when I connect it up. Okay, the first thing is you can, you now know why it's called a vibrator, you can hear that. That's the noise it makes. And uh, here's the output. So, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not like a sine wave, but um, you can see it's, uh, it's a pulsed wave. And um, if I just adjust it. You can see that there, there's a pulsed wave, and uh, so we're producing uh, an AC voltage uh, with a 12 volt battery. So what we've done is we've taken a 12 volt DC, and here we've got a uh, an AC voltage. Now, uh, what I've done in this test setup, I've just used the same transformer that I used in the other video, which I was talking about the solid state uh, vibrator. So this is now replacing the solid state vibrator. I've now got this going. So that's great. It means that when I get the radio going, I can actually use the original vibrator because you can hear it's working. Now, I don't know how well it's working, but uh, it seems to be okay. I measured the voltage. It's roughly about 200 volts on the output. And the frequency, which I, which I was able to calculate from the scope, worked out 100 hertz. And when I looked up... Uh, information about these vibrators that's normally around the, the right numbers so it's normally about 100 cycles a second and 200 volts so it seems like that's working it seems to me there's nothing wrong with that at all um, when I first started it up it was um, wasn't vibrating so so uh, steadily but now it seems to be quite a, a fixed tone so um, so I think that's fixed so I'm quite pleased about that um, so now I can start looking at the rest of the power supply and getting that going there's a few other little problems in there that i've seen already uh need to fix those and then hopefully pretty soon we might have a the power supply so that's like a big chunk of the work done because if i get the power supply going which is a separate unit in these old valve radios then i can concentrate on the actual radio itself after i've got the power supply going so this is the main heart of the power supply and and now it looks like that's going, so I'm quite pleased about that. I'll keep you informed where I go with this project. It's quite interesting. So, um, anyway, that's it.